Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, my name's Angela. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Rainbow Ange. Uh, today is Sunday the 21st of May and I'm coming to you from my home in Penarth in South Wales in the UK. Um, so if you have joined me before, um, you will have seen this backdrop, I think, one time previously, maybe my very first video. Um, I usually come to you from my shop, um, which is called Yarn and Yarns, um, also based here in Penarth. Um, but uh, it's a Sunday, we're closed on a Sunday. So it's been a couple of weeks since uh, I've managed to put up a video. Uh, I just haven't really found time to, to squeeze in any recording time. Um, it's been quite uh, busy in the shop, which is great. Um, and also we had um, some relatives visit us this weekend uh, which was uh, really nice so um, just just lots going on really so I thought I'd pop by and chat to you about some of the projects that I've been working on it's been a little while since I have done a project update video so I thought it'd be fun just to run through some of the things that I've been working on some of the things that I've finished um, so yeah I've got some knitting some crochet and a little bit of spinning to share with you today so I'm going to start by sharing with you some of the finished projects that have come off of my needles and hooks and spindle over the last few weeks um, since I last recorded one of these videos. So first off I'm going to show you the stationery socks. This is the lovely yarn dyed by the Yarn Enabler and it was sent to me by my friend Erin and uh, this was a work in progress in the last uh, video where I show, shared some of my projects, which I think was uh, vlog five. Um, so sock number one, um, this is the lovely pencil sock. Um, this was definitely in progress last time I showed you. Um, so I remember, I think I was probably halfway down the foot or maybe I just turned the heel. Um, as you can see, it's now finished. And the companion sock is an odd sock. Um, it's the kind of stationary set, so pencil and paper I might need to move back can you still see me over the socks <laughs> more important that you see the socks than me uh, so yeah that's the first finished object and I absolutely love these um, the yarn was sent to me by my lovely friend Erin who is uh, Dufferin24 on Instagram and Ravelry um, and these were just such a joy to knit I've absolutely loved every single stitch so um, thank you for such a, a wonderful gift Erin um, and now I've shown these off and I can't wait to wear them um, I am still wearing my knitted socks uh, the weather is getting a little bit warmer here in the UK, um, but uh, yeah, it, it's still a little bit hit and miss. So uh, yeah, hopefully these will get on my feet soon. <laughs> um, also, since um, I last uh, recorded a, a project update video, I finished two other pairs of socks. Uh, I think one of them I showed you in the uh, last vlog, uh, vlog five, which um, were the Debbie Bliss Rialto socks. I don't have those with me. Um, I actually, I've left them in the shop, um, so I can't show you those. And um, I also knitted a pair of uh, socks as a commission for one of my customers who bought some lovely yarn at Wonderwall and then decided that uh, sock knitting wasn't really for her. Um, I, I offered to knit those up for her. Um, I'm always knitting socks and I love knitting socks so it's actually quite nice to be able to, to knit for someone else because uh, I have lots and lots of socks for myself in my sock drawer so um, it's uh, yeah it's a good excuse to, to keep on knitting but if I um, can figure it out then I might put in a picture of those two pair of socks here. I've never uh, put in pictures but uh, maybe I can figure that out in the editing so Fingers crossed. Um, also on the uh, finish list, I have finished another uh, commission knit, which is another little baby jumper. Uh, this one wasn't even a work in progress last time uh, I recorded, uh, but it's uh, now finished. I just uh, washed and blocked this this morning. Um, it's a lovely, lovely sunny day here today. So uh, this has dried out really quickly. Um, it's just a really plain, simple um, little sweater. So I think uh, if you watched my vlog five, then um, I spoke about uh, one of uh, 
my lovely customers who'd asked me to knit up a few garments for her um so this is this is one of those she picked out a few patterns from the shop um so this one was actually a pattern um which is a serdar pattern and in the original it uh, uses snugly double knit uh, but um i used some Peyton's extra fine merino i'm just having a look to see if i've got a label anywhere yeah um <clears throat> This is not for, so yeah, I used the Peyton's Merino Extra Fine DK, um, a great yarn for baby knits. You can wash and tumble dry this one. A really basic, simple sweater, um, but it's got this lovely texture stitch across the top. Um, so yeah, quite a fun, simple, quick knit, that one. So I have also got another finished object to show you um, that you won't have seen as a work in progress. Um, I'm starting to think about the next display that I might have for the window in the shop. And I think I have decided to go, or I think I've settled on a blue and white theme. Um, so I've made a nice, lovely little striped tea cosy. Um, I don't know if you heard that. Uh, my cat Newt has just come to join me and uh, she is quite noisy. I don't know if uh, she'll let me pick her up. There she is. She doesn't really like being handled. She's not mean or nasty, but uh, as you can see, she wriggles to, to get away straight away. But uh, there you go. <laughs> so you'll have to excuse me if uh, you hear lots of meowing in the background. She is pretty much the noisiest cat I have ever known. <laughs> Um, anyway, I was talking about uh, my knits, wasn't I? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going for a blue and white theme, I think, in the window. And I have knit up a nice striped tea cosy. Um, I don't have a teapot to um, model this on. Uh, the teapot I have at home is quite small. And this has turned out to be quite a large tea cosy. But it's quite a simple um, striped tea cosy. Um, knit in three colours. So the navy, the blue, and the white. Sorry, I'm just uh, keeping an eye on the cat. I've got the, I'm recording in my attic room and I've got the uh, the dormer kind of windows open. And last summer she was fond of uh, escaping out of the windows and having some adventures on the roof. But I'm thinking that the windows aren't open quite wide enough for her to be able to do that. Um. <laughs> which is uh, obviously a good thing. So yeah, anyway, back to knitting. <laughs> I do apologise. I think it's going to be one of those videos. Uh, so yeah, my finished tea cosy. <clears throat> um, I've lined lined it as well. So uh, you knit kind of four pieces. It's really plain inside. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping that will look quite uh, striking in the window. I've also knit to go with that a sort of uh, teapot stand but I'm not sure whether I'm going to put this in the window or not I'm not as pleased with this um, but yeah it's quite a simple kind of uh, I think it was called a teapot co uh, teapot stand or something like that in the pattern book um, but yeah as I say undecided as to, to whether that will go in the window but the tea cosy definitely will and both of those patterns came from this book which is tea cosies um you might have seen that book before i think it's been out for uh, a few years it's got quite a few um fun tea cosy patterns um some of them are more outlandish than others but uh that the one i picked was obviously quite a simple one but uh there's all sorts of fun um patterns in that book um I'm just going for a colour themed window, so I wanted to, to keep that quite simple. Um, and before I talk about my spinning finished object, um, I'll just show you, I've been keeping all of those finished projects in this fabulous bag. 
Um, unfortunately, there isn't a label on the bag, so I can't say who made it, but it's this uh, lovely, lovely bucket bag. And I was lucky enough to win that um, free participating in a cow on the Brownberry Chronicles podcast, which um, is a podcast hosted by the lovely Mars, who is um, Hey Brownberry on uh, Ravelry and Instagram. And if you haven't uh, checked out her videos, you really should. Um, she's... Uh, a really fun wonderful lady so yeah that's uh, that um so yeah i've got um a spinning finished object to show you i'm just trying to have a look um last time on the spindle i um spoke to you about um the little bumps of fluff that i had from bakewell hearts i have spun those up now um i've actually got uh, three little bundles of yarn but i could only put my hands on two um Bumble the bumbles, <laughs> the little bundles of fiber were very similar, um, but as I've spun and plied them, um, these two have come out um, quite differently. So, um, if you remember, I was trying to um, go back to spinning a little bit thicker, and um, as a result, I think my yarn has uh, turned out quite thick and thin. I don't know. The camera's really going to focus on that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the with the way that they've turned out. So I think uh, I'll be able to knit them into a fun little object at some point. The other project that I managed to finish since uh, the last one of these was my contour shawl, which is a pattern by... No, I said Helen's Grace last time, but it's actually Joanne's Grace. Um, it's a lovely crocheted shawl. Um, again, I don't have that with me. It is currently sitting on a mannequin in the shop window. Um, but again, if I can figure it out, I shall insert a picture here. So yeah, they were my finished objects. Uh, so time to share with you some of my current works in progress. So I think I will probably uh, start with some knitting. Sorry, I'm just uh, having a look at the chaos that's on the floor um, and trying to figure out what I'm doing yet again. Um, I have been very lax and not really prepared any notes to, to help me um, chat to you a bit more succinctly about these things. But uh, hey, you know, um, if you've watched my videos before, you're probably used to <laughs> used to this uh, disorganised chaos. Uh, by now so yeah okay so stop waffling and and grab some stuff so the first project that um, I am working on is a, another baby knit um, yet again another commission for uh, the same lady that uh, my other projects have been for she actually picked out four jumpers uh, for me to work through um, so I've knit two I am halfway through or probably more than halfway through the third one that I'm just about to show you and I've got one of the left um, I did slow down a little bit on these projects unfortunately she hasn't been very well and she had a little stay in hospital so um, it wasn't as pressing that I get uh, these projects finished so I, I concentrated for a little while on uh, some other things but uh, I'm back into the, the swing of these now so the third pattern that she picked out for me um, is this one from designer yarns um, so quite a cute sort of striped jumper uh, with a sort of cut outside, which is quite sweet. Uh, again, I'm not using the yarn that um, was recommended for the pattern. Um, I've gone with some more of their Peyton's Extra Fine Merino DK. Um, when the lady came into the shop, she really took a fancy to this particular yarn. So I thought I'd uh, try and uh, concentrate on knitting up a few things for her in this yarn so um, so far I have managed to do the front and the sleeves and I have got the back left to do so this is the front which uh, hopefully you can see that so um, I've decided to the two colors that I chose maybe aren't for the striping maybe aren't the most contrasty um, I don't have the uh, sort of multicolour bore I've left that uh, downstairs but um, you can kind of see on the front here how that works up but I've chosen a, a dark grey as a contrast colour so um, the dark grey is echoed in the multicolour yarn it probably shows a little bit more um, 
obviously when I get to the sleeve because it's the sleeves that's actually striped but uh, particularly down the bottom there there's not really that much difference between the multicolor and the dark gray although it does notice obviously a bit more as uh, you go to the top of the sleeve and get into to some of the lighter colors but uh, I think it's working up quite nicely um, as I say I've done both sleeves the front which uh, I've already shown you and I'm just cast on for the back so I haven't got very far with that I actually ran out of the multicolored yarn so um, I wasn't able to to progress on that yesterday but I went to uh, swung by the shop this morning and picked up another ball so hopefully I should be able to crack on and um, get that finished this evening um, I hope to at least finish the knitting um, and then maybe do the, the joining tomorrow um, and then that will be another one of those jumpers finished. Um, I'm keeping all of those jumper projects, I don't think I showed you uh, the project bag last time. Um, I'm just trying to shove all the ends and everything back into the bag before I show you. Um, but this is a bag that I got from um, Lone Large Designs. Um, it's a lovely bag with uh, trees and deers on uh, in my favourite colour combo, orange and blue. Um, it's quite a nice big bag so I'm able to keep a couple of projects uh, a time at a time in that when I'm working on these small baby knits. Um, so yeah, and um, Jenny of Lone Larch Designs has um, her own podcast too, so that's the, the Lone Larch podcast if you fancy checking that one out. Um, so on to grabbing the next project. So I have also been working on one more knit project. I'm just looking around to make sure that is actually true. Um, and this is a really new cast on. In fact, I only cast it on yesterday. So um, yesterday, through the post, I got my subscription copy of Pom Pom Quarterly. And this is a special bumper edition because it's their five year anniversary. And um, it came through the door yesterday well, actually, it didn't come through the door. I had to go and collect it from the sourcing office. But I picked it up uh, yesterday morning and um, I started flicking through it yesterday and I just thought, I want to knit every single thing in this book. Um, so I kind of thought uh, maybe, you know, I will work my way through it. How likely that is to happen, who knows? Um, <laughs> but I figured I would cast on for a project straight away. Um, and I went for the first project in the book, which is called Sevilla or Sevilla. And um, it's a nice lacy scarf. I don't know if you can see that. Um, designed by Thea Coleman. And um, as soon as I saw the scarf, a yarn that I had in my stash immediately jumped to mind. And it's this beautiful yarn. I'm just going to reaching behind me to, to grab a ball that I haven't yet uh, started on. It's um, from Eden Cottage Yarns. And it is their White Fell DK, which is an alpaca yarn, 100% baby alpaca. And the colorway I'm working with is called Lichen or Lichen. Um, I purchased this the yarn a little while ago um, to make another cow project and I never quite got round to casting that on. Um, the pattern that I was going to use it for is called Alewives um, and it's by Bristol Ivy. I still really want to knit that pattern um, but when this yarn actually arrived I think I wasn't 100% um, happy with the yarn pattern combination. Um, as I had originally thought I would so that's why it's been sort of sat in my stash and I haven't cast that one on but uh, I thought that this yarn would be perfect for the Sevilla scarf I haven't got very far um, as I say I cast this on yesterday um, it's actually knit you knit um, you cast on along the long edge so you start with 300 odd stitches um, so this is how far I've got since my cast on yesterday um, I've used one ball of yarn so far and um, I'll see if I can, I don't know if you can see that, how the, the lace, lacy pattern is working up. Hopefully you can kind of get the idea. So yeah, I've been, uh, that's, that's a bit better I think maybe. So yeah, I cast that on yesterday and I'm halfway through the first lacy pattern repeat. Um, it's a 20 row lace pattern. 
and then um, reading further ahead in the pattern directions I think you pick out um, different bits of the lace so you, it's not you repeat the same pattern um, over and over again but you go back and you repeat a few of the rows in various combinations to, to make up the, the width of the scarf. So um, I have um, had to order, well I haven't had to, but uh, I've ordered an extra couple of balls of this um, from the Eden Cottage website yesterday. Um, originally I had five balls and I, I don't think that's going, well I know that's not going to be enough for um, the meterage as uh, recommended in the pattern. So yeah, and um, <clears throat> I'm keeping that one in my lovely Eldenwood craft project bag um, with the gorgeous gorgeous robins on um, and this is made by the lovely Emma of Eldenwood crafts and I know that uh, Emma watches my videos so hi Emma if you're watching this one um, yeah one of my favorite project bags so go check out Emma's Etsy shop uh, if you fancy getting hold of one of those for yourself excellent quality um, so yeah I could highly 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 recommend Emma's bags so the last couple of projects uh, that I've got for you are crochet. Um, I started this, I might have spoken about this on one of my previous videos, um, although to be honest, I can't remember if I did speak about it or I was just thinking about speaking about it. Um, but I've started this um, crochet mouse. It's a Debbie Bliss pattern. Um, and originally I wanted to um, replace the knitted chickens that I had in the shop window so yeah I'm pretty sure I did talk about this on one of my previous videos but um, it's taken me a little while longer than I thought to um, get this uh, little guy crocheted up for various reasons I started one version of him um, and instead of using the recommended uh, four ply yarn I went for a double knit and then I ran out and then I couldn't color match and yeah um, so he was looking looking a bit odd and I also managed to put his eyes on wonky so all sorts of things were happening there but um, I'm doing <laughs> a little bit better this time he's a little bit odd looking at the moment he has no features and no ears but uh, this <laughs> this is what I've got um, so yeah I'm not quite sure he looks a bit like uh, oh, I don't really know what he looks like he's just sort of a, a bit of a weird blob but he's got his tail he's got his legs um, I have actually crocheted up the ears they should be in the project bag somewhere she says yeah there they are um, so his ears are made um, but I haven't yet obviously attached so there's not far to go I've got to stick his ears on and then sew on the fabric bits if you can see in the pattern um, his ears and his feet um, I've got uh, some lovely little fabric detail and um, someone has given me a few scraps of uh, Liberty fabric so I've just got to go through and pick one I'm thinking maybe either this one or even this one um, because then he might fit in my blue and white window so that's kind of the the current plan but yeah I'm almost done with that um, and I might actually try and concentrate on him just get his ears back put them on the floor we don't want uh, him to be missing an ear um, so yeah I might concentrate on trying to get that finished uh, this afternoon for, I've got quite a few things that I want to do this afternoon my to-do list is growing um, but he's fairly close to, to being done so that might be the first priority and then uh, one more crochet project to show you, which uh, again, I've only just recently started. Um, on my Wonder Wall video, if you watched that one, you might remember me telling you about the t-shirt, cones of t-shirt yarn that I bought. And I've started um, crocheting with that. And I'm making a rug for my living room um, in front of the, the fireplace. I've um, not got very far yet, I'm just doing simple double crochets. I had a couple of false starts because um, I cast on, I cast on, I chained um, about 50 stitches I think to start with and um, happily crocheted away um, but I wasn't in the living room while I was doing the crochet. I was actually sat up here which is at uh, the very top of the house and when I took this, uh, what I'd done so far down to the living room I realised that it was actually turning out a lot wider 
than um, looked good for, for the space that it's intended for. So I ripped it all out and uh, pulled back again. It's uh, fairly hard going on my wrist, so I can only do a few rows at a time. It's uh, this really thick kind of t-shirty yarn. I don't think that you can really see that. I'm not very good at getting uh, my camera phone to focus, but hopefully you get to get the idea. Um, and I'm working that on this uh, 10 millimeter wooden crochet hook. Um, again, I picked this up at Wonderwall, but I don't think I actually showed it on the video. It's got a nice uh, big bead at the end. Um, so yeah, I am working on the first cone. The first cone's kind of collapsed into a kind of funny sausage, but um, I've got uh, three more cones of that. I'm not sure, originally I thought I would um, try and use all of the cone, just keep going um, and work up sort of color blocks in all of the yarn, but I'm not sure yet whether that will prove to be too much. As I say, there's a particular space that I want this uh, rug to fit into. Um, so it could be that I don't end up using all the yarn, but I'll, I'll keep going and, and see what I think. But I've got uh, three other colors to add, and I didn't show these on my Wonderwall video because they're quite heavy, and um, I recorded that one in the shop, so I didn't really want to, to lug the cones to the shop. Um, but I've started with that um, light gray, and then I've got these two blues. Sorry, it's a, getting a bit of glare, they're covered in plastic. And then I've also got this really dark blue, which will kind of be the last one. So sort of a colour block gradient. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure how long that's going to take me. Um, as I say, it's quite hard on my wrist because of the thick hook and the, the thick yarn. Um, so I can only really do uh, a couple of rows on that at a time. But it'll get done when it gets done. And of course, I had my aim of trying to use up all the things that I bought at Wonderwall before next Wonderwall. So um, it's good to, to get a start on that. And that has actually just reminded me that I've forgotten to show you one of my knit projects. So um, before I talk about spinning, I'm going to quickly um, show you that. Um, the reason it reminded me is because I'm using, um, for as part of this project, I picked up a, um, a little mini skein called a Wickedlet from Easy Knit. Um, again, I picked that up at Wonderwall. It was a, a bright yellow colour. And I'm using that for contrast heels, toes and cuffs um, on a pair of socks. And the main body of the sock I am knitting in this absolutely fabulous yarn from Amy, who is Stranded Dye Works. And this is her Batcave colourway. Um, see if I've got... No, I don't seem to have Amy's label in the bag. Um, I have finished sock number one. And I am currently working on sock number two. I have just finished the leg um, and I need to pop in a heel, which is uh, why I, I stopped last night. Um, I was working on this quite late last night and uh, it uh, seemed like uh, a good point to, to stop. And on this project is living this super cute stitch marker. It's a Sucre Sucre miniature. And that was sent to me in a lovely package from uh, my friend Courtney, who is Unravel an Elephant on Instagram um, and Ravelry. So uh, thank you for that, Courtney. Um, hello, if you're watching. I'll show you a couple of other things that Courtney sent me in that same package right at the very end of this video. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to uh, quickly show you my spinning. So um, my spinning, I am still working on the um, bag of fibre that um, I bought at Wonderwall, which is this lovely natural white fibre um, from a flock of Han Wenog sheep. And I spoke all about that, them in my um, Wonderwall video. So if you're interested in finding out more, then you can check that one out. Um, but yeah, it's on my Spin City spindle again. Um, my, from one of my purchases from Wonderwall and uh, so yeah I'm spinning this quite fine and uh, it's working up really nicely such a, a lovely soft yarn with the halo I have still got tons and tons of this fiber left Oops, sorry I kicked the chair that the, the camera is resting on them so I think it's going to take me forever and a day to, to get through this but I am slowly working on through it. I, I'm still trying to stick to my goal of doing um, 15 minutes or so spinning a day. 
So yeah, that's it for my all of my works in progress. Before I say goodbye, I just wanted to share a couple of acquisitions with you. Um, now, obviously I had a bit of a, a haul video from uh, Wonderwall, but I'm trying not to purchase too many things. Um, but there is one thing that I've purchased that I'm going to share with you. Um, but also, I was lucky enough, as I mentioned earlier, to receive a wonderful package from my friend Courtney. Um, and in that package, she sent me a couple of uh, really lovely goodies. <coughs> Just uh, reaching off uh, screen to get them. So I thought I would share those with you quickly. Um, first off is a skein of yarn from Marigold Jen. I've heard about uh, this yarn on lots of podcasts, but never been able to um, get hold of any myself. Um, but I am now the proud owner of this gorgeous, gorgeous skein. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful oranges, yellows, there's some purple tones. Um, so all of my favorite colors in there. Um, it's called Red Sky at Night and it is um, Superwash BFL 100%. Um, so yeah, I cannot wait to get knitting with that. I'm not quite sure what it's going to be yet. Um, I'm quite, at the moment I'm thinking maybe a really fun sock head hat, but uh, don't hold me to that because uh, I might just have to look at it for a little while and uh, I'm sure it will tell me what it wants to be and as well as that lovely lovely Leon um, Courtney very generously sent me some fiber as well which is absolutely beautiful again um, another brand that I've heard um, spoken about a lot on um, podcasts which is uh, into the world um, and she sent me this gorgeous gorgeous fiber I'm not going to take it out of the bag so there is a bit of crinkling sorry and um, there'll be a bit of glare but it's these gorgeous gorgeous blues and some browns um, and again, it's uh, Blue Face Leicester, so really, really looking forward to um, having a spin with that. So thank you so, so much, Courtney. Um, yeah, mwah, thank you. Maybe. Um, and a, a lady came into the shop and um, asked me whether I knew um, anyone who might be interested in having some things that belonged to her mother. Um, her mother had unfortunately recently passed away. Um, Mum was a spinner. Um, she also did quite a lot of embroidery and other crafts. Um, and I said that um, I would love to, to have a look at some of the things that uh, she was looking to pass on. Um, so she brought in um, a collection of things to the shop um, and I was able to um, take possession of them from her. Um, I gave her I asked her, you know, did she want me to purchase them? But uh, she said that she would take a donation of money towards um, one of her mum's favourite charities. So um, we did that um, and I was able to get from her some fleece, uh, which her mum hadn't got around to spinning. So um, some really nice Jacob fleece. I don't have that to, to show, but uh, maybe if I remember, I might show that next time. Um, she also gave me a bag which had some hand carders in. So... Um, that was quite fun. I'm, I haven't had any experience with carders or preparing my own fibre, but that um, is certainly something um, that I might try and find a bit of time for in the future. But the thing that I'm most excited for in the bundle of things that she gave me was um, this Niddy Noddy. Um, it's quite a big one. Lean back to get it in the shot. But it's absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it looks handmade. There's a little tack. Um holding the pins in. Um, it's just a really, really lovely thing. A really simple thing, uh, but a really lovely thing. Um, I got so excited about this. I think um, <laughs> I was chatting about this to James and then I showed him and I think he wondered why I was quite so excited. But yeah, I just absolutely love it. And um, uh, so sad that um, this lady had recently lost her mum. Um, but I will absolutely treasure this. So um, I think she was happy that um, some of her mum's things had come along and found someone um, that they would be appreciated by. So, yeah. So I think that's it. Um, thanks for sticking with me if you've made it this far. I feel like I... I've been a little bit rambly. I was kind of really up for recording this video, but then once I started, I've been feeling like uh, maybe I haven't had the quite the same energy that uh, some of my other videos have had so um, but I've made it through and uh, hopefully you 
have uh, found something to enjoy and um, I don't know if you can hear that but there's some really noisy birds flying overhead so <laughs> I guess that's probably um, a fitting end to this uh, kind of uh, bit of an incoherent video but uh, yeah thanks for um, for coming by and uh, I'm sure I'll chat to you again soon bye